Hey friends, welcome back to Nine Little Aussies. I am Chrissy, and if you are new here, welcome, welcome, welcome. If you're not, I'm doing something different. I've only done this a few times now here on our channel, and that is I am chatting to someone whose story I think is really interesting. So many of you may know Kelly Brotherton from Better Together Life, Better Together Homestead. I don't or know homestead what are we calling now. It? Yeah, at this point, Better Together <laughs> Homestead. So can you tell us, Kelly? Yeah. I am, thank you for being here, letting us come and visit your farm. This is the best. Yeah. It's so great. Thank you for having me. It has been very cool. Um, we discovered you guys and started watching a little bit of your channel back when we're still in Australia mm -hmm. um, through Abundance Plus and through Justin Rose. And really, I what I want to chat to you about is your story and how you came to be here on what seven acres mm -hmm. from like you didn't grow up living this right. lifestyle so can you start maybe mm -hmm. by just introducing yourself yep. and your beautiful family and we'll go from there yes and it's so fun because our beautiful families make up a very lot of people like a <laughs> lot of people are at our very small house right now and that's honestly like my greatest satisfying place to be in is mm. just hosting people mm. in a way that is very different from what we grew up with as like hosting mm. or preparing a space for people to come and right. like hospitality in general so right now we have I don't know what are there 12 of them a lot of voices in the house a lot of noise um, and they're eating burgers that they cooked on the backyard like porch and they're we just, have chatted all morning and I feel like I've lost my voice. We're already, we've been talking we're so already a little bit lightweight in the vocal box right now. Yes, so yes. it's uh, just a really great time. So you mm. guys being in Texas is what really made this possible. Yes. Yeah. So we came for a drive this mm -hmm. morning. We're like three hours, I mm -hmm. think it took us. So just a little bit under three hours because um, we're in East Texas. These guys are in Central Texas. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we are originally, well, originally, as you can be, from, like, Texas. My family grew up Army, and Bose is from kind of the Houston area, a little bit south. Mm -hmm. And when we got married, we stayed in the Houston area and grew our family there. And in that time, the Lord just had so many rooting parts of our life that were really um, growing into this firm ground. And in that time, we probably had very similar situations as like a new family. Like, you mm -hmm. know, we're married and we're having kids now, which is different than the lives we lived before right. marriage. Right. And that was a time where we just started waking up to some of the things that were almost like little foxes getting into the garden. So mm -hmm. we started reading labels on boxes at the grocery was store. Was there a trigger for that? Like, I know for me, yeah. it was a child with a rash. Like, was there, was there some kind of... It, it is a, probably a funnier trigger than anyone would anticipate. My sister was becoming a nutritional therapy practitioner. Okay. So she was like, hey, I need people to practice on. <laughs> and that looked like... Um, all of us siblings just laying on her like massage table and her just like po <laughs> poking at us, okay. finding pain points. <laughs> and then she would almost not prescribe, but like recommend some like dietary protocols. And so for me, she was like, Hey, okay. it seems like you've got a lot of like sugar addiction. Mm -hmm. Why don't we look at using food to help heal what seems to be a little bit leaky gut mm -hmm. and sort of food system, like food, um, relationships. So I went home and we started eating no processed foods. And it was okay. a dramatic change in how we didn't even know we were feeling poorly. Like yeah, we yeah. we were like, oh my gosh, I really hate everything in life right now. And we realized it was because we weren't eating. We yeah. were like purging all of this sugar and yeah. all of our like kind of like hunger for highly processed foods mm -hmm. because I really didn't cook at all which is ironic because now we're starting an entire cooking channel because okay. that was my experience was I went from chicken voila which is an entirely frozen meal in the okay. frozen food section to putting that in a pan mm -hmm. and now I go get eggs from my chickens and bring them inside and That's I make so cool. a Dutch baby with milk yes. from our cow like that is a radical shift, a yes. slow shift over time. But that began yeah. a lot of our ownership 
over the own decisions mm-hmm. that, that we were making health. for our own health, for yeah. our own family, and gave us a trajectory that, you know, could be changed at any moment. Mm-hmm. But what we really felt strongly were principles in our lives. Like, we want to be connected to our food system. Mm-hmm. And that doesn't mean you can't be if you go to the grocery store and buy a chicken. Mm-hmm. But it does feel very different mm-hmm. than respecting the lives of the chickens that you've raised yourself yeah that you have literally sweat over so when my children sit at the table just the other night we all thanked Oliver Oliver because he had raised the pork chops we were eating yeah and we thank sure. the Lord for the pigs and then we thank the pigs for letting us raise them and care for them and yeah. learn so much just even in that process alone mm. and that might sound overly detailed to someone who's like why would you like this is so emotional (laughs) but in the in the ecosystem of our property which is seven acres in central Mm -hmm. texas a small house um we had four children when we moved here Mm -hmm. they were very young and they were very short and now (laughs) they're very tall and we added one more so we had a desire to mostly be outside like that was Mm. like our plan was the suburbs felt like they were shrinking um even if my kids climbed up in a tree the neighbor was kind of glaring at them because now Mm. they could see them over their privacy fence and we're like let's just go where there's fewer fences yeah and let's just go where there are more trees and less neighbors yeah and and all of the homestead movement really came from an awareness that we just really weren't wired for where we were and so we needed to change our location to do the things we felt called to do. So would you say the initial kind of light switch that went on, if you like, was the connection between what you were eating Mm. and your health? I think, I think health overall, I was never looking to be healthier. I wasn't looking. Just how you were feeling. Like you said, you noticed. We noticed how we were feeling. And I think that's how we connected food. Like, to mm-hmm. food. We're like, oh, we're eating dead food. We're eating processed food. We're right. eating food-like products. We're mm-hmm. not actually eating food. Mm-hmm. So when we began to eat food, we are like, oh, this is what real feels like. Yeah. Then this will be very deep. And Bo always will get at me. He's like, Kelly, this is really not that serious. But <laughs> I don't know another way to be. And that is when we realized the food that everyone around us was accepting, that we had always been accepting as right. food, wasn't mm-hmm. real. Then we began to look at what else isn't real. <laughs> so I was like, yeah. why can't I grow a garden in my front yard? Because my HOA, my homeowners association, says that's not okay. Mm. Well, that's dumb. Because I'm growing grass, which does no good for the world or my own health, and I can't put a garden here. That's mm. dumb. This isn't real. Like, grass isn't real. That doesn't... I mean, you can touch it, but you have to manicure it, and you have to water it for no purpose other than the view of it. Right. So each of these little things became, like, children sitting for still in school. Mm -hmm. My children are not wired that way. They Mm -hmm. never were, and I knew from other friends who were in the education system. She was like, if you can delay a year before Mm -hmm. he ever goes to kindergarten, he'll be mature enough Mm -hmm. to then sit... For the job he's given to do in school. Mm -hmm. My children's education is wildly different than mine, but so rounded, Mm -hmm. so why so holistically built to create lifelong learners, to create critical thinkers. Yeah. So you're deliberately choosing how you do all these things instead of just following along with the system you right. grew up with. You're yeah, kind of like questioning a lot of Jump out things. of that flow. Because yeah. the flow probably mm-hmm. would have led us to a larger house with more debt uh-huh. in a very developmental, uh, or not developmental, but like um, ever developing area. Like right. we probably would have stayed where we were and it just would have been business and consumerism and growing. Mm-hmm. And individually, those aren't bad things at all. Right. Those are, that's how we survive, right? Mm-hmm. That's how society works. But none of those were conscious thoughts. All yeah. of these were things that we did T-ball because our neighbors did T-ball. We went to the church that we went to because our neighbors went there. Okay. We did We did all of these things almost homogeneously. Yeah. And there isn't room for 
think there's there's still a an acceptable thinking like for our children to run around without shoes all day mm. is great for their feet and great for their spine and great for their immune systems and all of these things it would not be acceptable for them right. to do that in our neighborhood someone's yeah. calling cps <laughs> like there are just <laughs> those things that the more and more that we exercised our right to be a little bit different yeah We've made many, many mistakes where I'm like, oh, yeah, that time my child's foot got infected because she was running around shoeless. You know, maybe I should have been up to date on that more, like checking her feet more often. Those right, kinds right. of things you still learn. Of course. But I think the more and more we just stepped out of line, yeah. the more we realize the line doesn't exist. Yeah. Like we're all in a queue for something that has no promise at the end. So mm -hmm. even if we have... Why are we doing all these things? Right. Why like, for doing? example, the house. What the house payoff for all of our friends, this was early 30s, we had this goal of, like, what if we were debt-free in our 30s? Mm -hmm. And our friends are like, oh, that's a great idea. Except that we're buying this new big house, and so we're accruing more debt. As our house, our family is growing to, you know, 2.2 children, mm -hmm. and we need five bedrooms just in case people come. And I also need a home office and a home gym. Mm. And it became this, a, a mass more stuff. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah. we had a, a fork in the road where we had to decide, do we want to amass more stuff and more debt for the promise of, of selling the house and, and making our investment? Right. Or do we do this radically absolutely stupid thing that everyone is telling us not to do cash in our 401k and go buy a second property and maybe we'll move there one day and it's away from everyone that we know and we're going to do this homesteading thing when we've never even butchered a chicken we never we were just then buying whole chicken from the store right we, so had, ne the we had been buying you know cutlets and yeah, drumsticks yeah. and so how seasoned so how did you get from i don't know this is my question i don't know how did you get from this place of yeah. like i grow up eating food out of a box right to i'm gonna go live on seven acres mm -hmm. like how what was what yeah. took you there? Was there? Yeah, I think anyone you interview who knows Jesus is like the Lord. Yeah. Like that's all you can say is like, mm -hmm. I wouldn't have chosen this, but the Lord's plans for us were so much better right. than the things I would have chosen out of comfort. Mm -hmm. And I do think everyone that I've admired or watched mm -hmm. their their growth or success or even admired their grace and failure mm -hmm. has gone through some sort of I had to throw everything away for the right. sake of running after what God said was good mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and what God said was good for our family and I do think not everyone should do this I, I think mm -hmm. not everyone should do this um, because I think a lot of people come to crisis and regret and their mm -hmm. their faith is broken because they were expecting something completely different. But all I was expecting was for the Lord to meet me in the middle of the woods. Mm -hmm. And if I could be satisfied in that, mm -hmm. then I don't care if it's the woods or the beach or the mountains or a basement. Like, that would be okay for me. And thankfully, it wasn't a basement. <laughs> thankfully. But that I mean, was it. It was just like, hey, we're going to say yes to gardening. All right, yeah. let's garden. And then... So did you start doing... Did you wait till you got out here to no, start doing... No, not at all. Tell me about that. We purchased the property in 2015. That's when we were like, screw the system. Can I say that? <laughs> you just did. I can change it. I can change it. And you no, can it's edit so it. good. Okay. That was basically when we said, the system isn't even what we want. We right. don't want the investment right. 30 years, 60 years down the road. Mm. We want to live now. Right. And so we cashed everything out and we purchased this property not knowing anything. I just said, this is insane. Bo, you're done. <laughs> and if this is going to happen, I laid my fleece out and I said, then the Lord has to provide the property. And not only does he have, like, I was so yeah, sure right. of myself. Yeah. I was like, God has to provide the property. He has to provide the lender. Who is going to give self-employed people money for a property? That's stupid. And then I said, he has to provide um, the amount of money that we need to put down. Mm -hmm. And he did all of that in one day. And in one I day. I was like, no. I see. It's like, <laughs> you, did, you got the answer you didn't no, want. No, <laughs> I did not want it. I was so like, why did you want it? Clear. What was your because hesitation? Because it's comfortable being still. It's yeah. comfortable yeah. playing small. It's very yeah. comfortable. It's also um, almost... Again, like what is really real? Mm. And at that time, 
I knew the system was not real. And I don't mean like, I don't, I don't mean that, um, like powers that plugged into the matrix. I, yeah. <laughs> not, not that because Bo is the one who's going to tell you all of that. And I'm fine with him being the one to tell you, but I do think the, um, the, the carrot and the stick in, mm. um, in our, in our society, like growing up in America, the, the rule is go, go to school, don't do drugs, graduate, go to college, mm -hmm. get a job, start mm -hmm. a family, have a house. These are the, these are the roles of yeah. success. Right. And at the end, these you'll be markers. promised so much success. Yeah. We have had family who has lost children. We mm -hmm. have had friends who have been estranged from their families, friends who have lost jobs. Now mm -hmm. friends who've lost entire homes and towns. Mm. And the reality of that is just like, why mm. am I waiting to live my life in the next 40 yeah. years? Yeah. Yeah. So it was a huge, not even like wake up, but we took this risk and God was like, yes. Mm. So we bought the property while still mm -hmm. living in the city. I had three children at the time. I now have five. <laughs> I could not have predicted yeah. the way things would go. But after we had sort of I guess Bo had a plan and he was like, well, we could live on that place in a, in an RV. And I was like, absolutely not. I will not be living in a place in an RV with this many small children. They were very small. Yeah. At that time. I had like little. a five year old at the time, like mm -hmm. very five and under, mm -hmm. very small. And it sounded beyond uncomfortable. It sounded like marriage breaking like risky yeah dangerous. like like unwise i guess right, is the right. best like jesus way to say this it sounds unwise. <laughs> so um he was wise to listen to me and say mm -hmm. hey we'll delay this but he Baby kept steps. it was such an ember in bow mm. like it burned in so him. it started in him perhaps before Absolutely. it started in you well in the weirdest ways like i told him let's have a garden okay years before he was open to it okay but as soon as the ball was rolling for Bo, and he had this idea of what if we just had an acre we began to look at properties mm -hmm. all near us because mm -hmm. what if we had an acre and we could still be a part of our life mm -hmm. we'd still be a part of our church our community mm -hmm. our friends very little would have to change mm -hmm. if we could find this one acre near houston mm-hmm and that acre did not exist, not yeah. for a good amount of money. It was like yeah. one acre for crazy amounts of money, HOA yeah. restrictions and all these things. Yeah, so you couldn't do what you wanted anyway. Yeah, and so we mm -hmm. had to totally cleave from that space mm -hmm. and say, like, we love this. And the Lord's been so merciful to teach us so gently. Like, our faith mm. was fortified in this time of our marriage and with our community and the church that we are part of being so solid in the word mm -hmm. that we just knew wherever God was going to take us, whatever it looked like and however uncomfortable it would be, yeah. it's obedience and it's good and yeah. it's for our good. Mm -hmm. So that was an easy yes. Once, once God was like, heck yeah, let's do that all in 24 hours for you, Kelly. Let's just <laughs> show you how good I am. Then I was like, I've well, got this. I know. I was like, <laughs> I, my my person part of me is like I don't want this yeah and then the spirit in me was like yes I don't want to not like you've made yeah. this so clear for me yeah to say what no. happens now if we don't walk through this door absolutely what kind of regret will there be yes like we felt we felt a big part of that mm. when we made the decision to come here and like we there was so many hoops to jump through and so many sacrifices to make but I knew that if we didn't do it, right. I would always regret that. Yeah. Because it was such an open door. Mm -hmm. Like you said, like, mm -hmm. cause at the very beginning I was like, this feels like a mountain that we cannot climb. Like seriously for mm -hmm. this to happen, like 20 other things have to happen first. In place. Yes. Yeah. It's like all these doors have to open. Mm -hmm. And when we read like, cause there was a parent, cause I had to immigrate mm -hmm. and there was like a, two to three year waiting wow. list for immigration wow. because it was all backed up from COVID because mm -hmm. during COVID they shut down all the processing of paperwork. And so we're like, man, it's going to take us three years even just to process paperwork. And then the Lord just went boop, boop, boop and opened all these doors. And I was fully processed in nine months. Like instead of years, instead of years. And it's like, well, you know, so multiple things yes. like that yes. that you just like, yeah, okay. 
I, I see the yeah and almost like I wasn't ready for it but yes <laughs> I and I don't ever want to live with regret I think right. Bo is a little bit more calculated and a lot of marriages are this way where people One just almost taker and... like think with completely different parts of their brains yes and we're often saying we have to translate for each other so we'll pause and we'll say here's what I hear you saying is that right and sometimes we have to get back on track yeah but his vision was just a very like steady slow burn and he mm -hmm. just knew that he wanted to be here and then we went through a lot of phases almost like what you're saying is like I don't want to regret not like I don't want to get ahead of the spirit and I don't want to be behind yes it. that's right I just want to be yeah. in step with one the Lord. step at a time yeah and like just trust it as scary as it can be mm -hmm. but not scary out of fear it's scary out of like not knowing if you're yeah. even capable of this Right. Right? Like, moving out to the city. This wasn't a camping trip anymore. I right. guess is where we got to. <laughs> yeah. But Bo also had to work through a lot of his, like, fearfulness. Because he mm. was the prepper. And he mm. was the, like, if all of it hits the fan, I can't be in the city. was how he felt about it. Okay. And then my, my heart was just like, I can't run away from something. We have to run to something. Right. Yeah. If we're running toward a life that gives us children barefoot in the trees. Mm -hmm. If we're running toward campfires because we don't have a kitchen built yet. Mm -hmm. I can do that. Right. But I can't run away from all of this comfort in the city right. to discomfort because you are afraid that the world will collapse. Because then if it doesn't... Mm -hmm. And we're we still in the all, bush and we're uncomfortable. And we're <laughs> not only uncomfortable, but we're still dealing with the fear here. Correct. So yeah. if we can be yeah. whole, if we can mm. be healed, if we can at least get to the place where we're just trusting God for what's good next, even yeah. if it's uncomfortable, yeah. that's healthy. Mm -hmm. But before that, if we're just running because we think that we'll never be able to escape the city unless we go right now, mm. yeah. Yeah. They can still be the same ends, but mm. the means are very different. And I think yeah. one builds trust and independence in the yeah. Lord, and one of them is still your own strength. It's and still I do, your own fear. I do see a lot of both of those places mm. in you know the online world, mm -hmm. but not even just the online world. In our community, I've mm. seen it in this new little community we're in, and there is this this whole, you know. There's, there's some who are very much trying to be, you know, to grow their own food and to be mm. um, self-sufficient and to care for the land, all of which I think are, are admirable and great qualities. Yeah. But like you say, if it's coming from this place of fear, mm -hmm. which it is in some people, yeah. then there's this kind of anxiety behind yes. it. And it's to me, that is just so sapping. Mm -hmm. And I don't like, I don't want that. That food's not going to taste good. No. If you brew it with anxiousness as an right. ingredient. It and so taste me, good. and I really love this conversation because, like, you guys are coming from a very similar place to my husband. Mm. Like, coming from the city. Yes. Coming from, it's wild I've to never us. done this before. Whereas for me, yeah. going to the homestead, going to a piece of land, was like going home. Mm. Because, and honestly, it's helped me to cope with living in a foreign land because it's been something familiar to me mm. it's been you know we we were talking this morning about um how justin rhodes was the kind of the first mm. um youtube channel that we started yeah. looking at and learning from and for my husband in particular it was like this gateway his story was yes. a gateway to oh maybe i can do this right. Maybe just a regular guy yes. can have chickens. Mm -hmm. Maybe just a regular city kid can start growing food. Like, you don't have to be a yes. rancher. Do you know what I mean? Yes. You don't have to wear a big belt buckle and boots and a hat. Like, yeah. you don't have to have a certain persona, mm -hmm. look, personality, life experience. You can just do it. Whereas for me, yes, I feel all of this stuff in the world that's mm. turbulent but I honestly would choose this no matter what was going on mm -hmm. because to me it's the most humane way to live. I And it's completely. just where I feel comfortable. Yeah, <laughs> so on that, tell me more about how you, because even the way you're doing this now, 
looks very different than the way you grew up. Although, right, true. checking the boxes is very similar. Land, check. Family, check. Right. Growing food, check. Right. So how is this different? It is different. Also in the mothering role compared to being mm. the child growing up in that. True. I, so many times I wish that I could have one last cup of tea with my dad. Mm. <laughs> and because, so, you know, I, we're yeah. looking for a milk cow and I'm like, he would know. He would know what to do. He mm -hmm. would know where to look. He would know. And he's passed away. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, it is very different being the child who on their farm and a lot of those, like I have to check myself because mm -hmm. my whole adult life mm -hmm. up until this time has been relatively urban. Sure. Right? So my whole childhood, yes, was on the land, was mm -hmm. either the first sort of 13, 14 years on a sheep and cattle property, the next five years on a dairy farm. Mm -hmm. So, you know, my whole growing up years. But it is different mm -hmm. to live that as a child to live it as an adult. Yeah. And yes, we were very involved in everything. Like we milked the cows, we hoed the thistles, we fixed the fences, mm -hmm. we did everything that mum and dad were doing because yeah. we would do it all together. But we did not have the burden of responsibility of decisions mm -hmm. <laughs> or yes. of providing. Right. And also, you know, we're coming from a place of wanting to very much do things on a small scale mm -hmm. in a way that is regenerative to the land and healing to the mm -hmm. land, which I do think my mum and dad were definitely leaning that way a lot more than their neighbours. Mm -hmm. But maybe just on the cusp of that. Right. Rather than like, you know, fully. Well, and there's only it. so much you can do that <clears throat> is like radically different. Yeah. From your neighbors when you're even living rurally. Like And a big part of our desire to be very careful with things like chemicals and not having them on our farm. My father did end up passing away from um he had Parkinson's and Lewy body dementia, which mm. is not your regular dementia. Mm -hmm. It's like he was told by the neurologist is triggered by neurotoxins mm -hmm. and it's very high rates in farmers because you know he was yep. spraying blackberries up on the mountains mm -hmm. with no protective gear for yeah, months and they, they weren't doing it at that time no no yeah. like up to here in sheep dip Gosh. and you know so lots of chemicals mm -hmm. so that's something we're very conscious of yeah. and wanting to not have on our mm -hmm. place so it's different the way we're doing it is different right. And also we're having to get yeah, come from this the but position it feels of, like coming home so what that feels like coming intense. home what the what feels yeah. like coming home is being on the land and when I say the land I mean a piece of land yeah. where I can actually still from certain places see my neighbors mm -hmm. but I wake up in the morning and what I hear is cattle bellowing in the back mm -hmm. pasture yeah. chickens clucking and roosters crowing and birds mm -hmm. instead of traffic you hear <laughs> life I do I just yeah. hear and so that to me is what feels like home mm -hmm. having my hands in the soil yes. growing things you know isn't that's that what... such a radical I don't know how to say it. like everything engages when your hand mm -hmm. is planting or harvesting or amending like dirt under your fingernails I mm -hmm. did not know mm -hmm. The power of a dirt manicure. Oh yeah, I just didn't even know it. Yeah, and no. now I, because she mine. I was yeah. telling her, I was like, I, even now as we talk about it, in the same way I might like really crave great pizza. Like we're talking about this, I'm like, I really want to go plant something. Oh yes, you, you crave yes. this. So when we moved here, when we moved here, we had like so we were telling you earlier yeah. the story, and we were on that rental property yes. month to month. And I was like, this wait, wait, this is month to month, but I cannot, I cannot not plant something. Yes. I've this because this by this time, it had been months and months since I was mm -hmm. had a garden, and so I I just had to. I was like, we have to get some pots, we have to do something, and we actually dug up. We got some permission from the owner and dug a, a patch up in the back and and planted some things. Of course, and we're like completely naive and realized that 
the deer just came right through it. I was right gonna say, it, do like, something uh, for me. All of everything beautiful. Yeah, like deer planted. trumped yes. all through and ate the. You're like, how rude. Yeah. Okay. Come on, nature. I'm okay. trying to commune with you. You're just destroying everything I'm building. I actually didn't mind because I was like, oh, deer. <laughs> So you just built an expensive deer feed. A very That's expensive great. deer feed. Wonderful. Yeah. But you're right. There is something very, to me, and it, I think there's something in the human soul mm. that needs that. Yeah. And that, that, that even when you don't know you need it, mm -hmm. it, you kind of, there's a, there's a yearning for it that is fulfilled mm -hmm. when you have the exposure to it. You're like, oh, you know, like yeah. I know for Mike, he didn't grow up in this way of living right. at all yeah. like it's completely foreign to him just like coming here was foreign to me right his foreign land is farming yes <laughs> like, yeah right I, I feel like that like i can connect with mike on this because yeah it is so there is no dipping your toe in no there is um a creator on youtube ruth and zim oh i love her yes yeah, she's on um instagram is where i found her and she was, is great. I just she's so peaceful. I love I listening think to her. It's something that she said. I shared this with someone else the other day. I don't remember who I was talking to, but I said, Oh, it was a friend who'd gotten to go to a conference where she was speaking. And I said, mm -hmm. You know what stuck with me? And probably two or three years ago stuck with me. But on an Instagram, she was just doing chores, maybe making cheese or mm -hmm. something very unpretentiously. Like, this is the rhythm of her life and this yeah. is what she does. And Ruthann said, I feel like as I'm getting more attention on Instagram and I'm watching many of you send me a message, it's come to my attention that most of you did not grow up learning these lessons gently mm. over a lifetime. Right. It pierces me to even say it out loud, not out of regret that I didn't grow up learning these things, right. but almost as like a hug, like, hey. Yeah. This is hard. It's okay. And it's hard because you didn't grow up learning this. Yes. But in the same way, yes. I can often feel frustrated about being the only one in my area with a, a milk cow, like a dairy, mm. and not having vets yeah. who know anything about it. And sometimes yes. I want to like shake my fist and just be yeah. like, this you, is hard. what happened to all the people who knew how to do this? Where yeah. are they? Yeah. And a girlfriend of mine who lives about 30 minutes away, she said, Kelly, we're the ones. Yeah. She's like, you have to step into the ownership of what God's called you to. And he's called you to this so that when your kids want to do this, yes. they have they can talk to you gently over time. Yes. You like 100%. you want your dad to yeah. talk about the dairy cow. Mm. You get to be the person with your children saying, yes. and their friends. Like, here's how you choose a cow. Yeah. Like things yeah. that you know because you've learned it over time and you're just we mothers are gonna have to step into this role because so yes. many of us are this first generation homesteader. Yeah. Where we didn't have any benefit of learning these things over time. We learned other things. Right. Education for education's sake is absolutely a valuable thing in that it teaches you to be curious and mm -hmm. learn mm -hmm. if that's your philosophy on education. Um, but for performance sake, it's pitiful mm. because I could have performed straight A's all throughout school. Mm. And then here I am completely clueless mm. that a seed breaks open underground <laughs> and this is how the, the plant grows. Like yeah. I didn't ever think about a seed breaking open underground. Yeah. Some kids learn that in preschool and that's great, but it wasn't <laughs> my preschool. And just those small things, like yeah. my children know this. Yeah. They know it from the type of education. Yeah. And like you were doing. talking about Finney and like Georgia yeah. now is like, this is completely the only way to live apparently according yes. to their knowledge. Yes. This is just totally normal. Yeah. Like driving into is, traffic, how surprised they'll be there's so many people here yes. yeah. yeah yeah it is a beautiful thing I think you know just like coming here and the the homestead being like a bit of a haven for me mm. and a cure for homesickness really because no matter where you are in the world the the world over the earth is the mm. same yeah. like it that's the, a good way the flora and fauna changes mm -hmm. but the earth wants to grow and it's mm. still God's earth no matter where you are so it's it's still like to me it's it feels like home no matter what grounding yeah it's grounding yeah. it's grounding but this whole foreign thing that you have felt and that I know my husband has felt of like I really because it really hit me 
several months ago, I was in the garden and I'm like, because the roads, right? Mm -hmm. Having to learn to drive on the other side of the road. I can't even imagine. Terrifying. Like, I, it's just ter like for months, I wouldn't drive. I would be afraid. Like, I would have nightmares over that. Yeah. So I completely I it can was, see this. It was, anyway, it was, I don't know why. Maybe it's because I came here when... You know, I'm in my mid 40s, and my brain is just so wired over so many yes. decades of this. But is you're how literally we do it. driving on the wrong side of the road here. You're yeah. like, this is wrong. And but you know how many things we do in life that are um, like programming. Mm. It's just automatic it's where you don't have to, to yeah. think about it. And a lot of what I might do on the homestead is programming mm -hmm. from my childhood. I know how to interact with animals, right? Mm -hmm. How to think about behaving around a cow is different sure. how I behave around a chook, yeah. right? A chicken or, um, or you know, like yeah. you kind of have that inner wiring because it's of what I grew up with. Yeah, it's, you're not gonna just go get knocked over by a cow because right. you didn't see it coming. Right, whereas for, um, people who have come from this it's like a foreign concept but there has come a point where so I could see how uh, challenging it was mm. for Mike right in the beginning yeah. when there's so many things that are completely foreign and new whether it's setting up a fence mm -hmm. or right. moving animals or building stuff or you know whatever whatever mm -hmm. yeah but then there's this sweet spot you get to, mm -hmm. like when I finally got the courage and to drove drive on, on your own. own. And like, I remember the time I was yeah. driving down 69 and I'm like, hey, I'm not freaking out. My knuckles I think are I not turn, white. I think I can turn the music on. Because for the beginning, I was like, I can't even turn the music on. I'm just going to concentrate That's so, so I don't kill myself. That's such <laughs> a good story. Yes. So You're then like, oh. I finally, I remember the day. I'm like, I think I can handle the music now while I'm driving. And so I turned the radio on because before that yes. I was just too, it was freaking me out. You had too much to concentrate on. Yes. There was too many things it's to like do It's like all correctly. these neural, yeah. new neural pathways had yeah. to be formed. And I realized that is exactly what's happening mm. for my husband. Yeah. And then the day when he comes in and says to me, oh. It's just so relaxing out there. It is. I feel that. Yes. And I'm like, he, so we're crossing over from the creating new neural pathways to the place of, um, pro, it's the programming's there mm -hmm. and now there's comfort. Even comfort in the hard work. Even yeah. comfort in the expectation that things will not go right. Like, yeah. I think yeah, there's it doesn't mean a, there's going to be. Yeah, like if my education is for performance sake, mm -hmm. then when I perform poorly, I, I'm a failure. My, my identity right. is rocked. Right. If education on the farm or yeah. the homestead is for education's sake, yeah. to be learning, to be growing, to be developing new neural pathways, mm -hmm. then my expectation to go do the cows is that something is going to go wrong and we're going right. to adapt. Yeah, it's okay. Something's, we're not just going to go out to get this done real quick and right. check it off. Right. Because when I do have that expectation, we will fail poorly. And then it's so frustrating. Cause and then like, I feel like I'm a failure when really, no, cows are entire beings that do what yeah. they want. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times you'll anticipate, oh, my cow will come when I have food. Yeah. If my cow thinks that it's time to go to the milking stanchion and I didn't put up the line, then my cow is going to do what the cow thinks is going to happen. And I'm okay with that because mm -hmm. I didn't put up that line like mm -hmm. we can adapt to realize kind of like parenting it's very rare that our kids are just bad kids and they're giving me a hard time it's yeah. much more likely my kid is a kid and having a hard time and they need me because I'm their mother and mm. so those expectations just shifting mm. oh this is about you your child mm -hmm. I can come support you in this need mm -hmm. okay this farm is not just about me and my right, needs. It right. is about, I have now invested myself in this cow. Yeah. And what she needs is, I have to adapt to her. I even find relaxation mm -hmm. in the cow being a cow. Right. And and not do you me think that's whipping because, her into my shape. Do you, isn't that interesting? You've just hit on something. Is Do you think that's because we 
surrender to being part of mm. a, oh. part of a whole creation, part mm. of something instead of in the city. Yes. And I'm not having to go at city. Like, sure, sure. But just this, maybe it's a difference between a mentality of um, participate, active mm. participation in the world as mm. opposed to like you say, I'm going to dominate. I'm going to make everything line up with what I want, mm. and I'm going to where I would be the center. Yes. Mm -hmm. Whereas mm -hmm. you cannot do that when you're working right. with animals or even plants, like the land. Yeah, even absolutely. even growing food, it's going to vary so greatly, mm -hmm. season to season. You know, good years, bad years, mm -hmm. droughts, floods, whatever the case Gosh, may be, yes. it's going to change a lot. Mm -hmm. And learning to listen mm -hmm. to and I don't mean that in a weird, you know, but spiritual we, way, but it is almost a spiritual thing. Because it, it has list, to be. It's listening to yes. what's going on. What is, what is the earth telling me? Not, yeah, I don't, what I don't is, mean to sound but weird, but. It is creation. And yeah. we aren't going into nature. We are nature. Right. We are natural. We are made by the creator in the same way that mm -hmm. the very first trees ever came up. So we mm -hmm. are connected. Yeah. And I think when people i i do think you're right i think that's a very soulful thing in mm -hmm. every human being i think mm -hmm. that's probably very much a part of our being made in the image of god yeah. we have the power to create yeah. we also have the power to destroy right and we have the cap capacity for discernment to know when to do mm -hmm. either of those things and there's so much um, satisfaction and contentment mm -hmm. when you embrace that part of who we are as people mm -hmm. and learn to create mm -hmm. in you know as we were created to yeah instead of just consuming right and submitting I love that word that you said like is there something about submitting to our mm -hmm. role in an yeah. ecosystem so yeah we're not exclusively seven acres but for the sake yeah. of my like conversation yeah. In this seven acres, we yeah, do. This is your. Yeah, we have to. We have. We have domain, mm -hmm. right? Dominion over it, but we have to submit to mm -hmm. the weather. Yeah, we have to submit to our cows' needs. It's not we dominion like make, you're the CEO. We're not cracking it's, a whip, right? Right. You have to. You have to participate, mm. and yeah, you have to submit for the good to... of of its purpose to exist. So, like mm -hmm. the property could be cracked and whipped into things, but I really do think we would suffer some blowback either in yeah. high expense, like financial yeah. expense. Yeah. Or even um and frustration. Yeah, just like we would <clears throat> fail. And honestly, I know that there is uh emerging information, maybe research, I don't know if it's that deep, but anecdotal at least, of how many people boomed into homesteading after twenty twenty. Yeah. And how many people are quitting? Yes, and I think, I think so. I think the effort is, or the expectation is that my my effort will produce results. And right. if I'm not producing results, then I am not making the right effort, and I'm not good at this, or I'm not wired at this, or the mm. individuality of it. Mm. And the homestead can never be about the individual. Even beyond mm. that, like I really kick back at self sustainability. Because mm -hmm. I think it has to be community. Yeah. I think it has to it be does. community sustainability yeah. because I can't grow it all. Mm. And all of my friends don't have milk cows. Yeah. Like we all have very spiritually rooted parts that we play. You know, mm -hmm. like if we're all part of the body and we're neither as hand nor foot or eye knowing what everyone else is doing mm -hmm. in a community, in a society, everyone should play a role. But in compliment yeah. and lending to another, yeah. maybe even submitting in some places, like we have to submit to weather. We have to yeah. submit to our yeah. cow who needs to be milked twice a day. So yeah. how do we accommodate that yeah. and not just whip her into shape? Because I only want to milk once a day. And so yeah. suffer your suffer as you may. And realizing, like, you know, we were talking earlier about permaculture mm. and just the ability to, to say, well, the, I might have these ideals of how this little... Thing I have seen in my sure. mind that I want it to be yeah. but I actually have to look at my land and my climate mm -hmm. and my family and my budget even even absolutely <laughs> and you what know that every little thing that we have to address that we all do have but looking at those individual things instead of trying to squeeze some ideal mm -hmm. 
into your own life, which yeah. doesn't always work. Yeah, and sometimes even if you get the ideal, but maybe aren't such a participant, like you're saying, mm-hmm. like it's not the rest that Mike feels. It's mm-hmm. not so relaxing mm. because there's so much satisfaction in honoring the way that something's meant to work. Yeah. So honoring how the seasons work, honoring yeah. Yeah. you know what it looks like to amend the soil and then let the soil do its work. Or mm-hmm. even the beauty of a few years ago when we had snow and we were like, amazing. what a great thing snow will do for this property. It's going to give this like cold blanket, mm-hmm. nice and nourishing and wet so that all of those, because in our hot climate, we might have a lot of rainfall, but it evaporates very quickly as well. Right. So we were just so excited to see what that looked like after a season of snow. And I think that the what purpose, did that do? What did that do? Well, like we noticed it mostly in our forest where we would okay. have like a lot of leaves fall in the fall and then they got this great blanket of snow. And we had a very cold season that followed the following year, okay. but it was just ice. And so that mm. actually was very different. And then snow, ice did a lot of destruction where it broke trees. Right. Um, But the snow, Mm -hmm. we just felt like, I mean, I don't, if it had only been our second season here, Mm. I think our second full winter season. So the snow was like just exciting to see that things were wet after that. Like, I know Mm -hmm. that sounds so obvious, Mm. but for us to experience basically 10 months of summer all year long. Yeah. And then a few months of chilliness and like, a light jacket with a hat if you're trying to be cute. Like, that's is so not functional. <laughs> See, because I think it's so freezing here in the winter. <laughs> I mean, we have not had... I We have coldness in the winter, but mm. the length of time for winter yeah. is so brief. It really Compared does to... maybe a month of mm. winter, which means, like, you have a few days of 20 degrees. Mm-hmm. A few days. Mm. I mean, we really have not had that much. So that season was just... A lot of what you're saying about when we were walking, you know, you you wait and you watch and you see what your property does. Right. Where are the high places? Where should we put those pocket ponds? Yeah. And the pocket ponds really are just moving the earth into more of like a high, um, almost like you're building a little mini dam, but like a high mound of dirt. And it's just catching. So, for example, our property kind of runs like this. It's a slope, but it's Mm -hmm. a gentle slope. Mm -hmm. So we're catching water high up on that slope Mm -hmm. so that when it rains, it doesn't just erode all of our property down to the low places. So I guess it's a gentle slope, but there is a point probably right around here where it's just running so fast. Okay. But it's washing dirt off of the yeah, property. Off your top so soil. if we can catch water high, which okay. we started doing about three years into here. Okay. We catch the water high and it slows the erosion down. Yeah. And so the water actually absorbs back into the earth. And yeah, that's perfect. all we want is to yeah. have water stay in our property. Hydrating. Because our soil. climate is insane. Like mm. it's so dry and so hot. Mm-hmm. And we haven't had rain for two months right now. Mm. And that's unexpected in this season. Yes, yes. We're used I was to rain. saying it should have been raining by now. I mean, I say it should have been, but all of this is still quite new to us. I would say yeah. in 10 years of living here, we probably will have a larger, you know, yeah. amount of data even. Yeah. Just like, yes. what, is the, what is the data telling us about 10 years in Texas? Yeah. Are things really changing? Because we've had some crazy storms where they're like, this hasn't happened in a hundred years. And we're like, yeah. well, lucky us. Yeah. I mean, like, I we don't know what you want to say. We get the freaks, Tom. Well, yeah. and we, cause you know, I mean, this is our, we were figuring it out before us. So we've been in America a year and a half. Mm-hmm. We've been on this property just one year. Yeah. And so it's, everything is just like, no surprising yeah Yeah. like we just don't know what the seasons are supposed to be we hear from neighbors and we talk to locals you know and try and get as much local knowledge Mm -hmm. as we can but there's no replacement for years of quiet watching yeah but you're building that Mm. and your kids will have that right and that's what's wild because all of a sudden we're the parents I mean, I know we've been parents quite some time, <laughs> feel grown up enough. but it is such an yeah. odd thing because even that, like you mm. grew up on the farm, but mm. you were the child and right. now you're back to the farm yes. and almost that muscle memory of just your wiring, the, the things that your neural pathways created as a child right. are like lighting back up because it's familiar. Yes. 
yes. and for your children they always will be and for you and Mike it's like this amazing dream yeah that you're actually getting to live which comes at quite a cost yeah I mean it does yeah. it really does and it's it's not I I'm a very romantic person I like to idea I'm idealistic mm -hmm. in the way I think I know that <laughs> and I know I can be you know I can be blind to the downsides sure. of things because I like to see the beauty in everything. Mm -hmm. But having said that, there is it's just so worth it despite mm -hmm. the hardships. Like right. it is it's really it is starting a homestead on little to no budget is not fun no. in some ways. It's it's real, it's <laughs> It's not the you sexy wanna... YouTube jam. Yeah, no, it's really we don't not. have the big fancy red barn, and we can't just go grab all yeah. the animals. It's very slow and steady, mm -hmm. and there's a lot of things you want to race ahead and do mm -hmm. that you can't. But even still, yeah, even still, it it is. I don't know. I just I I get back home even after just going to the shops to get groceries, mm -hmm. or and I'm just like. I drive down that little road yeah. and I'm like, so You're going to feel grateful. that way tonight going home. You're going to yeah. be like, oh, this is home. Yeah. And there's something to be said about that too. Just like building a homestead from scratch. Everything's meaningful. Yeah. Because it does. It costs That's a true. lot, not just of like finances. Effort. But it takes effort and decision making. And there are a lot of priorities that have to go into place. And you really have to decide, yeah. is this worth what it's going to cost to yeah. do? Yeah. And I think that everything just becomes this, like, uncovered little treasure that and you store yeah. up. And there's something, I think, in us as people that wants to be mm. grounded and rooted to a place. Yeah. I mean, a home. A home, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, I know some people, lo like, just seem to love that whole gypsy life and that's fine yeah. maybe some people are born for that yeah i'm not but that no it's <laughs> no. not me it's not yeah. me i just i just want to be in that place mm -hmm. where i can live year mm -hmm. after year mm -hmm. and you know i know that probably sounds crazy because i've just moved over the other side of the world but You're it's like, always can that you know that you might have you looked in the mirror you might not know but this is who you are i know i know but there's still that 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 desire to just yeah. be grounded and mm -hmm. settled in the one place and build something for well, and probably family. even because you guys have been moving, right? Yeah. Like you're like, oh, it's time. Like you can kind of sense that, and I think there's something mm -hmm. really cool about being able to like trust yourself. Maybe that's just the privilege of being a mom past her forties. Yeah. Is I'm like, I feel like I can trust myself. Yeah, I'm not worried about the catastrophe that comes from me making a mistake or not being able to course correct or even, right. you know, where are my boundary lines? Like, what am I willing to say yes to and risk and what am I not? Mm. I just feel much more sound in my decisions so mm. that I can build a home that I'm not building my entire identity into, mm -hmm. but it's going to look like my home. It's going to feel like my home. It's going to be the thing that my children remember yeah. when they grow that this is what home feels like, just like the yeah. view. The homestead feels like home. Right, because even though it's on the other side of the world. Exactly. Even though the animals are different. Yes. Yeah. And yeah. I think we say a lot, like, you can homestead anywhere. And I mm -hmm. agree. Put mm -hmm. your put your tomatoes on your apartment porch. Yeah. yeah. But there is, I think, equal if not more measurable reward when you do risk and move entirely across the world. <laughs> 15 hours difference just in the time. Yeah. Drive completely yeah. on the other side of the road in terror but faith and <laughs> raise your children in a place where people talk super weird. And <laughs> we love you it. You know what I mean? Like these are these are things that that's just not normal. True. But it's good. It's so good. Yeah. Okay, so there's full circle. This is perfect. Because yes. I have loved Let's. this conversation. <laughs> but really, I mean, that's what you guys did, right? right? You left what is normal mm. and what is what all of your other family mm -hmm. members had been doing. Yeah. And totally out of the box. Yeah. We're gonna go and you didn't buy an existing homestead we either. Did. <laughs> You've like done the, the you've done this the hard yeah. way. Well, when you're saying like do it low budget, I'm like, yeah, it's not easy. It's and it's so 
But if it hadn't been the farm, wouldn't it have just been the next big house in Katy? Right. Wouldn't it have just been a car with leather seats and heating? Like, wouldn't it have just right. been something else to try and scratch that? So this has mm. a built-in discipline mm -hmm. where, yeah, I could go and I could get a loan and I could build a house, mm -hmm. but I would never pay it off in my lifetime. Mm. And to me, that just isn't worth it. Mm. And what do you have to show yes. for it when you yeah. do that? And I mean, yeah, this you're right. Mm -hmm. There's something so... Like, if you look at where your life was, mm -hmm. how many years ago? Just six. Six years ago. Mm -hmm. And then you look at wh where your life is mm -hmm. right now and what your family is doing mm -hmm. and the life you've created here. What would you say mm -hmm. to your six years ago self mm -hmm. who was freaking out yeah. about and saying, what? <laughs> yeah, I think I would say you'll love the Lord more deeply than you ever would have if you stayed. Hmm. And I think I would say your marriage will survive hmm. and your family will grow and you will never, you will never miss what you didn't have. If we had stayed, hmm. there hmm. are so many things I could imagine amassing hmm. stuff, mm -hmm. credit, reputation, mm -hmm. business. I mean, our business changed completely when we moved here. Yeah. And, but I don't regret those mm. things that I never had. That was a future right. promise. Right. But never guaranteed. Mm -hmm. And I think it's really important you said this, not dogging the city. No. This isn't for everyone. Right. But I do think there's a massive encouragement to be had that you are not made for the mold that the world has for you. Mm -hmm. And what it would tell you is entirely your reputation, your clout, your identity is based on something you can touch mm -hmm. and you cannot. Mm -hmm. And so as long as that illusion is in place, and I think six years ago, Kelly was happily flirting between those two ideas. Mm -hmm. I have an identity in Christ and therefore, no, it's just period. Mm. I have an mm. identity in Christ and that is worth it. Mm. But I think that without the separation of all these things that I had clouding this relationship mm. with the Lord that were good things, mm -hmm. that were good, right. godly, church-worshipping things mm -hmm. were building up these credits for me in my own mind. Yeah, and the Lord without even like, realizing Yes, it. of course. Yeah. They were habitual. It was right. habitual to go to church. It was habitual to serve there. It was habitual mm -hmm. to tithe there. It was habitual to put on the microphone and to show up early so that, mm -hmm. you know, it was habitual to smile at the people and say thank you when they would say, oh, you're so great mm -hmm. at singing. Thank you so much for this. Mm -hmm. So much good purpose. Mm -hmm. But I think just the reality was that for our family and for me to lead my children well, the right. Lord had this stripping away for me to be able to speak mm. to them out of a true heart of depending on Jesus, mm -hmm. where I thought I was doing that before, mm. but God allowed so graciously the hardship of building this homestead from scratch. Yeah. I am not suffering. Our family has meat yeah. and milk and yeah. everything that we could imagine staple wise. Yeah. I think I would feel maybe in the city, maybe yeah. that. I was missing out on things that I didn't have. Mm. And here, I am so, so content. Yeah. I am at rest. I am at peace. Yeah. Not just because I have a cow and meat and milk. I'm grateful for those in a way that I could never have been yeah. had we stayed. Yeah, because you, you didn't know what you were not yeah. having. Yeah. And you, you just mentioned, and I think this is actually maybe bigger than... This is really important. You mentioned yeah. about el equipping you to be the mother mm -hmm. and leading your children the way mm -hmm. you needed to. And there is something, I think, about the restoration of family mm -hmm. in this, um, I guess this, there is, I, I feel like, I don't know what, uh, yes, 2020 had mm. something to say with this, yeah. that it had a big impact, right? And people started going, oh, I think maybe I want to start having yeah. control of my own food supply. Right. But this might have a purpose. <laughs> yeah. That's right. But at the same time, 
in in this i think what what it did you know where everyone was stopped at home and couldn't go anywhere yeah. and all of a sudden we're like oh you're my children let me look at you i'm alone with my own thoughts how yes. do i feel about that yes and how do i want what is family mm. what what do yeah. we want for our family and i think in going to this place of like let's let's find a piece of land let's start growing our food and let's bring our children along mm -hmm. there is something so um really honestly i mean it sounds cliche but deep and meaningful yeah for our children right in what they're learning through yeah. that process so yeah, yeah and that again like their identity isn't wrapped up in us it's not mm -hmm. wrapped up in their performance although they have many challenges that they get to arise mm -hmm. and and fulfill but they're satisfied because I think we're made to be satisfied. Our homes, our families are the smallest community that we'll ever be a part of. Yeah. So everyone's role is crucial. Everyone's role is purposeful and no mm. one's made mistakenly. No yeah. one is, we're not without struggle, but no one is made in a way where I'm like, mm, you need just to be a little less extra. You need to be a little yeah. less you. Like, there's just very few policing moments in their lives that say conform. Yeah, well, everyone has their their thing that mm -hmm. they can contribute, right? Yeah, and their they, skills in the way they're and wired. Their yeah, and yeah. Like even tonight, we or today, getting ready for y'all to come. I have kids who love to be outside, and I have one who would much rather be inside. So that mm -hmm. child watched the kid, the baby. Yeah. That child cleaned the house. That child yeah. even got laundry done without being asked. Yeah. Helped cook the food. And I'm like, yeah. why would I try and make you miserable right. to be outside? Yeah. Not that that child doesn't also have plenty of outside experiences with yeah. us to do things. Yeah. But I'm just like, this, we work better. Yeah. We are, and they're valued mm -hmm. for who they are and not mm -hmm. just what they contribute. But contributing, I think, is something that, makes us feel satisfied just like yeah, Mike like I absolutely. feel satisfied in the rest and, yeah and I think that yeah the return to family is no mistake that that mm. is a beautiful fruit of homesteading yeah absolutely because you need all those workers yeah <laughs> you need all those hands <laughs> to make the work bearable yeah it definitely makes it out and a lot more rewarding I mean you can mm. sweat your guts out and get cranky with the chickens and cut your foot on something and at the end of the day sit around have a meal together yes sit under the stars around a little fire and just go Whew, yeah isn't it good that we got that done yeah you know, and you're and just, satisfied yeah yeah i agree yeah this has been such a great conversation and you know honestly i was like i really want to talk to kelly and hear her story and i really didn't know exactly where this conversation sure. would go but i think this has been perfect Gosh, love it yeah it's, it's awesome. gonna be Thank hard you. to keep us away from each other now <laughs> that we've like broken the ice and yes. you guys have made the drive and I'm it's like, really not that far so you have to come visit us and next it's, time and it's an easier like you know like some cities are harder to get to but i feel like getting to you guys will we be did not doable. have to go through any traffic it was just like straight shots this is homesteaders avoiding people at all costs yeah that's right <laughs> how do we make that happen thank you for coming oh thank, thank you thank you for wanting to do this this thank is you all your coming. ideas so i take well, no credit and honestly i really and truly believe you guys that sharing each other's mm. stories and experiences is so crucial mm. because we can, yes, we can encourage each other. It can be educational. It can inspire each other. But it can be that little door. Maybe there was something in what mm. Kelly said. Maybe just a phrase even. Like I remember at the beginning of our journey, it was just such a little thing. Like this little chicken video that Mike watched of Justin Rhodes. Yeah. That he was, like, your life. he was like, hey, maybe maybe just an ordinary city yeah. guy can have chickens you know I like think that's probably what they're talking about inside right now is just like here is what we thought that maybe we could do this yeah it's very cool it's so great so be blessed guys thanks for hanging out with us and we will see you again soon and as i say i don't know my sign off on my little channel is sunshine and raindrops I love this. So please, Lord, let us have sunshine and sunshine raindrops. Sunshine and raindrops. And I always say we need both, right? Yeah. In the seasons of life, we need sunshine and we need mm -hmm. raindrops. 
And if we can have the right ratio, Lord, yes. that would be awesome. <laughs> I would love some raindrops next week. Yeah, extra raindrops, depending on where you are I in know, the world. That's true. All right, we'll see you next time.